Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the Entry Grade Gundam with the full weapon set. As usual, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want some of these, this here Gunpla of your own, link is down there in the description. So if you're considering getting into Gunpla or just want an absolutely phenomenal 144th scale RX-78 too, you might be thinking about this right here. That is the Entry Grade Gundam. Now, I did do a video about the Entry Grade Gundam sometime last year, but that one was a Christmas version before the normal version came out. Then I did that video where I built it in the bag, and I realized I've never done a video about the Entry Grade Gundam, as in the standard colored Entry Grade Gundam at all. So there are a few of these available, like this here, the bag. Gundam's still in it. All is still in the bag. And then there's this right here, which is the boxed variant, which is exactly the same kit, just this time in a cardboard box. So what makes this one right here different? Well, let's build it and I'll tell you all about it. So inside of the box, you get the exact same entry grade Gundam that comes in both the bag and the standard box. We do get a couple of extra runners in here and that's what makes it different. And I'm just gonna mention, this is one of the simplest Gundam builds ever that has the most payoff. I mean, what you get for the amount of plastic is crazy what Banda has done in here. And I'm gonna build this with the beginner nipper just to kind of give you the gist of how simple this is. But I will mention, never, ever, ever buy this nipper. It's arse. I mean, it is better than nothing, but I highly recommend getting something a little bit better. So as for the build of the entry grade Gundam, this is so smart. Bandai has taken a lot of the elements that they've kind of simplified over the last few years with their fine build kits as well as 30 minute missions. So we've got some simplistic joints that work extremely well. Most of the limbs like the lower legs or the upper legs or the forearms, these are just made out of two pieces, that is all, but they still look phenomenal. Most of the seam lines are hidden very well, so you're not gonna see any gaps between the pieces. And the color separation is so good for how few parts are in this. Every time I build this, I get, well, blown away by what band I have done. The thing that always gets me the most is the head. There is no black underneath those eyes. They have implied the black under the eyes and around the eyes with shadow. That is so cool. There is two more of these coming up. Uh, the Strike, which I think is available in some forms now, but not the full release. And the new Gundam that's coming out sometime next year, both of which I am super, super pumped about. Those are going to be awesome. But yeah, if you do build this kit with the beginner nipper, you're going to end up with a lot of nubs everywhere. So you're going to have to do a little bit of sanding, buffing, and clean up to get rid of all of that. I also recommend some simple beginner steps in case, you know, you've never built a gunpla before, like cleaning up the safety nubs on the V-fin with a file so you get a nice, sharp look. And it's always good to panel line your kits, either with a fine liner or a pore style marker, because it will bring out the detail that is in there. I just did the head and neck on the entry grade right here and it brings it to a real sharp detailed level that just looks so cool and you know the thumbnail as for what does make this box different from the standard boxed variant or the bagged variant of the entry grade is the fact that we get some additional weapons in here and beams actually some beams for a change no longer are those beam savers just playing a ceremonial role up on the shoulders we now have some beams to get them into the action but yeah this is the spread of what we get when it comes to the new weapons inside of this kit but anyway let's get in to the full review so jumping into the full 360 spin i say time and time again the entry grade blows my mind it just looks so good the color separation on this is almost 100 percent the only thing i could say is a little bit of a letdown is the fact there's no color in the camera on the rear of the head but besides that this does look spectacular. All the colors look perfect. The sculpt and the geometry on this is super sharp and just everything looks so nice. And just to give you a little bit of an example of the other options that are out there, there it is side by side with the high grade revive. Now, I will mention I have misplaced the backpack off my high grade revive. I must have been trying backpacks on it in another video and popped it into the wrong box. So it does have a backpack out of box. Personally, I do prefer the entry grade out of the two. I do like the look of the plastic on the entry grade. I like the color separation on the eyes and head. The little bit of yellow on red in the crotch. It just looks so good to me. But if we go over to the high grade, we do have a lot more detail, like the lines down the side of the legs. There's some more detail on the arms. We do have a sticker, sadly, on the crotch and on the eyes. And overall, I feel like it has aged quite a bit compared to how premium and new the entry grade is. But there is a lot of other differences to them, but visually, I do prefer the entry grade. 
So jumping in a bit closer, and like I mentioned, this head blows my mind. So we don't even have a seam down the side because they've made the upper segment of the head one part. We do have a bit of seam at the very top up in that Gundam Mohawk, but that's not such a big deal. But it's those eyes, those eyes that imply black below them by being separated the right way. Just a little bit of depth below the eyes and it looks like black. That is sorcery right there. Absolute Bandai black magic. That little V segment in the crotch there is color separated as well. The yellow segments just attach onto the surface of that iron diaper and this, I don't know, the things they have done with this simple little kit right here makes me really look forward to what is going to happen with this line with these two kits right here. Super excited. But yeah, this kit has been around for a while, so we might as well check out what comes in the new box right here, which is the full weapon set. So jumping right into the accessories, and here is the entry-grade Gundam full weapon set with absolutely everything that it comes with. So as well as the shield and the beam rifle that you get with the standard entry-grade, we now get a pair of full beam sabers. We would have got the handles with the standard version, not the beams. And what is 100% new in this box is the bazooka, the beam javelin, and the Gundam hammer. So the first of the weapons we have in here is the beam rifle. So once again, for such an inexpensive kit, this looks great. The side segment up top is not in yellow, so you may have to paint that if you want this to be fully color accurate to the anime. Besides that, it does look great, and we do have a moving handle up top, which can move side to side, just like so. Popping this in and out of the hands is simple, it just slides in like that. And speaking about the hands we do have in here, these are just the standard holding hands only. So that does mean no dynamic posed ones. So the Revive right here does come with posed hands, so I'm curious as to whether or not they fit, because like I mentioned, I do prefer the entry grade compared to it, so it would be nice to have some extra hands. Yes! Yes, they do! You can steal the hands! <laughs> I'm gonna do that. So next up when it comes to the equipment that came with the standard version of the entry grade, we've got the shield. Up front, this looks great. Three colors, red, yellow, and white, but if you flip it around to the back, it is a little on the plain side, just white with a lot of thick, almost remedial looking parts, but that does not matter once you get it slapped onto the arm. So this can just be attached into this hole, and that is enough to hold it on if you want the additional free hand, or if you prefer your security, you can just pop out the handle, stick it in this way like that, and now when you attach it into the Gundam's hand, and then the back of the forearm, it's held on there. Rock solid, and I have to say, that looks so good. Again, the colors on this kit are phenomenal. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's a nicer shade of blue than the Revive. So this is where this version of the entry grade starts to divide away from the one we would have seen before because now we've got some beams with our beam sabers. With the last version, all we got was a pair of handles which could store up on the backpack for the look. But in here, we've got that full pair of beam sabers. Now that is cool. I don't know about you, but I feel like a Gundam missing the beams from its beam sabers is just not right. That Oryx 782 needs its big, iconic pink beams. When those beam sabers are not in use, you can store them up in the backpack by pulling the beam out and then sticking the handles up into the backpack like so. This is a secure connection, so they're not gonna go anywhere. So the next weapon that we have in here is the Gundam's Hyper Bazooka. So this is all in grey once again, but made out of a multitude of parts. That does mean that the handle here can tilt just like so to make it easier for the Gundam to handle and pose. To pop this into the hand, you just take this little section off from the bottom of the handle, slide it down into the holding hand like so, pop that part back on, and like I mentioned, because this handle can tilt like so, you're able to angle this neatly up onto the shoulder, no problem. So that is what the entry grade Oryx 782 Gundam looks like with the Hyper Bazooka attached. And once again, for something so inexpensive, this is mind-blowingly good. So the next weapon that we have in here is this right here, the Beam Javelin. And now this is the first thing that does feel a little bit budget to me. Let's get it attached and I'll tell you why. So first off, in order to attach this onto the Gundam, it's the same as before. It just slides on into the hand like so. So I'm going to just grab a picture of the Oryx 782 with the Beam Javelin off the internet so you can see him holding it before I mention what the issue with this particular kit is. So that particular issue is the fact that the hands on the entry grade do not open up like we would see with other kits like high grades. On top of that, the big old ball end of the javelin does not come off and neither does the handle with the lip on it down at the holding end. So the combination of all three of those issues means the Gundam cannot hold this anywhere along its shaft. 
That means you're restricted to only having the Gundam Holy and of the Javelin at all times for this big, long, kind of odd, well, pokey, pokey, pokey kind of pose. Sure, you can kind of try and pretend that it's holding it with both hands by angling the Javelin in such a way that it looks like it is being held by the hand, but that is pretty much it. The design here was a little bit not fully fledged, I guess. That and the fact that the end doesn't even have any sort of clear parts. I know this kit is a budget-friendly kit, so that makes sense. But you will be requiring some pink paint up on the business end. So going from a little bit of a disappointment to an absolute win, this kit includes my favorite RX-78 II weapon of all time. That is this, the Gundam Hammer. This is an anchor on one end, or a hook, and a legit flail on the other end with that kind of spiky morning star kind of feeling. Just think about this. It's got an anchor on one end and a beating ball on the other. Absolutely awesome. However, it is not all fantastic news with this particular weapon because we do have a C-clip holding the anchor onto the flail end and the flail end is a little bit on the heavy side. So that means it can flip side to side on you and it's a bit of a balancing act in order to get the poses that you might want. You can pull them off, however, they may flop eventually, and it might flop a lot. But if you are a little creative with the body of the Gundam right here, you can get this into a position that looks pretty cool in a pose and will stay in place no matter what you're doing with your kit. Even if you're flying it around the place like this, if it's put in a smart position, it will always look good. So now jumping into the articulation, and as usual, we will be working from that head down. And as for the build on this, it is rock solid. Nothing here moves at all, but I have heard that the hip is a little bit of a breaking risk. I've never had an issue with that just yet, but it feels a little bit tight towards the inside there. So be careful with the hip joint, apparently. So starting with the neck, and we do have that full giggity 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 goo double joint. So there's it looking all the way up, nice. Looking all the way down, pretty good. And we've got full side to side and tilting action. The shoulder on an entry grade is more limited than a high grade because there is no forward and back right here. It's just in position. However, we do have a lot of up, a lot of up as you can see. We've got the full 360 spin right there. The upper arm here is on a ball joint, which gives you a little bit of pivot here, but it doesn't affect the shoulder. We've got the full spin of the arm. The elbow here is simple yet effective. We get a decent enough bend off one joint. And as for the wrist, it is a standard ball joint. We have a very nicely designed ab crunch zone right here. So that's forward. Then there is back. So one more time forward and back. Very nice. On top of that, we do have the full 360 spin right there. Front skirting armors can swing up like so. Side skirt can move up and down like so, as well as rotate towards the back and all the way to the front. The butt flap on the iron diaper back here does not move. And that looks like a functional hole of some description. Like, I mean, does something attach into that, like the accessories? Yeah, not from what I can see. These are ball joint hips, so they can be a bit limiting. There's the kick all the way up to the front. There is the kick out to the back, and that does feel a little tight. Beware there. And as for the splits, four ball joint hips. That's not bad. Next up, we've got the full spin at the upper leg. That right there is our bend at the knee. Very nice. And getting that foot on the ground for the functional movement, aka what we can get without taking the foot off the ground. So that's all the way to the front, very nice. All the way out to the back, again, very nice. This armor can move, not really, it's on a ball joint. And then we've got side to side, so nicely, nicely designed for something so simple. So what can I say, the entry grades articulation is mind-blowing once again, considering the price of this tiny little package right here. The only thing a little bit limited is the forward and back movement at the shoulders. But besides that, this is extremely impressive. So anyway, that right there is it for the review. And once again, the entry grade Gundam is Gundarium tier. And that does mean it is a build like no other build, which kind of makes sense. It is the first of this kind of entry grade, entry level, simple yet ridiculously complex kits. It ticks all the boxes. Visually, it looks fantastic. The color separation is amazing. There is no stickers. We've got implied shadow in the eyes. And the shade of blue on this kit looks so good. This thing is so photogenic. The accessories inside this kit is pretty much all you could ever want. The beam javelin is a little bit not as nice as the rest of the stuff, but a little bit of paint and it'll look pretty cool. And the articulation is phenomenal. Once again, 
for something that is less than $10. This is both Platinum tier, which means as good as Gompla gets, and Gundarium tier, which means it's an unmissable build. If you've never built it, you should. And once again, I am super excited about trying out the Strike and the new Gundam whenever I can get my hands on them. Anyway, if you do want one of these of your own or for any of your Gunpla needs, I have a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking those who support me here on the channel as members and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, or G59061, and Gunpla UK Limited.